Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Hypermind Modded. Today, I'm going to show you how I'm using Steve's Factory Manager to run some of the auto crafting for Applied Energistics 2. Are you ready? Let's get started. Well, usually when I have brought you back from a previous episode, I have shown you a lot of external changes. So, but uh, not much has happened since the last time we were together on the exterior. Instead, we've had a lot of work on the interior. So nothing new out here. It's the same as it was. Well, a, a little bit different. You can see that we've got a little more walkable path. And that's because I was tired of being tempted to go into flight mode. So you can see we've got some slabs and some stairs, and so I can walk around. If I did have the high walk feature, I think Batania has something for that. And uh, I don't know what else, but um, yeah, if I had that, then it wouldn't be a problem. But I just need to make it a little more walkable. So there we go. Uh, over here, I used to have my machines. I've moved those. Then I put a roof on the power containment area so let's take a look at that real quick and then we'll go in and see the various changes that we've done all eventually leading up to showing you what i've got going with steve's factory manager and ae2 with the raw material crafting so here we go we've got some generators in place around this tesseract that's going into power storage in so let's see furnace generator culinary generator and i pulled this from the chicken generator we're no longer generating power from chickens. Nope, I pulled that down, it was too noisy, and I needed to clear up the skyline. So yeah, you can see we've got an even path all the way over there. So no more holes in the ground, no more hidey hole. Uh, that has been covered over. You can still access it from the Castle Keep basement, but for now, it's covered over. And then all of that goes into our power storage that's not in vibrant capacitor banks. No, it's up there. Yep, I've put together the Draconic Evolution uh, Energy Storage Multi-Block. This is tier seven. It can store up to two trillion RF. We're at 73 billion, and that's primarily coming from the Eulorium that I'm burning up in the reactor. Yes, I could go with a turbine. Yes, I could. That would be a little bit more efficient I'm sure but for now we're just going with burning it all up so up here instead we've got solar generators and then I've got an ultimate solar panel a resonant solar panel we're working towards another ultimate solar panel and a couple of solar generators there um, and I was able to do the ultimate solar panel because I have increased the auto crafting capacity so I've put some more molecular assemblers on the crafting cube so that makes things a little bit faster and then up here we've got a massive massive uh, crafting CPU lots of storage lots of coprocessors so yeah we can handle an ultimate solar panel right there no problem right now I can't do one because we don't have enough lapis let's just pull up ultimate solar panel right here let me show you the crafting plan. We're out about 13K lapis. That's a problem. So we'll have to figure that out for now. Let's show you some of the machines that I've put together. And that's also to help with some of those more complicated recipes. We've got interfaces with patterns for a lot of the alloys that we find that we need. Same up here, a bunch of alloys in place. They're all targeting these alloy smelters and uh, yeah so there we go over here we've got some recipes in for uh, pulverizing and you know nothing nothing too too bad there and then i've got all of my ooh, crafting recipes in the interface back there interfaces for the crafting cube back there all right so other than that uh you heard you heard the pulverizer going we've got the ore processing working on some redstone right now and then down here we've got most of the other machines we've got another crafting one going for, for uh, steel so in here we can process refined iron we send all of that to the uh, compacting drawer you can see how we've got it running with ender io conduit right there it goes into a compacting drawer that 
makes our steel ingot. Bob's your uncle. We can make steel for our our ultimate solar panel when we eventually get to it. But what we really need to get to is how are we doing the auto crafting for the AE2 stuff. So down here we've got a crystal growth area and then this doubles for our Fluix crystals. And then up here we've also got a charger. And then we've got our inscribers and we're running all of that with Steve's factory manager. You can't see any of the inventory cables because I've got them all camouflaged. They happen to be also doubling as the conduit for the cable. So uh, we've got the advanced cable clusters going like we use for our ore processing. And so uh, this block right here, this block, this block, this block, they're all conduit or cable, inventory cable plus camouflage cable. And uh, right here, it, it says technical block, but it's actually an advanced cable cluster with camouflage on it. And that is targeting our inscribers. So we can make sure that we send items into the correct spot on those. And, uh, yeah, down here, we've got another block that is doubling or actually quadrupling, I think. So right below that water, we've got an advanced cable cluster. It's functioning as inventory cable and camouflage and a block gate and an RF emitter. So I think it's four, four items that it's doing. The reason it's an RF emitter is because it's turning on and off a toggle bus that you can kind of see if I put my cursor right there. You can see in the whale up top, ME toggle bus. So the RF emitter turns that on or off, which lets power go to our, uh, our crystal growth accelerators or not. And the reason you want to turn that off is because they will keep running and draining your power, whether you've got items in there growing or not. So next up, we've got two interfaces that are the primary drivers of this whole thing. We've got recipes in here for Fluix and charged surface quartz and pure crystals. We've also got uh, an interface that's for the calculation circuits and processors. And those are both targeting different chests, which helps us with our processing in the inventory manager a little bit. So here we go, we've got the trigger. It's checking every second and then running through all of these items. These are all groups. And so we can take a look at those in more depth in just a moment, but the trigger is gonna go across all of them. And then eventually any of these groups that have outputs, they're going to come out of the group, go into this flow, and then go to our ME interface. So yeah, so that works out quite well. And what we're gonna do is just take a look at these one by one, the charger. This has a, a flow that makes sure that the charger can accept something to be charged. And then once it has charged the Certus Quartz, it's gonna send it back to that output. You've seen me go through some of these conditionals before. This is just uh, kind of checking all the major assumptions. One, that we've got, uh, that nothing is in there in the first place. If, if it is, then we're just going to be sending it on out or waiting as the case may be for the thing to charge fully and otherwise it's going to pull something from the input chest, put it into the charger, and there we go. The next one is the crystals. We've got a few different things here. First order of business is taking a look at the Fluix building. Okay, so we're gonna send nether quartz, charged surface quartz, and redstone into that, that little dot of water right there in the center of the crystal growth accelerators. We don't need the accelerators on it. It's just, it is water. You do have to put those items in there to get your Fluix pearls out or Fluix crystals out. So, so yeah, there we go. It's, it's just doubling for those. And then once we get in here, we just make sure we've got the items, we grab those, and then we send, uh, send those to our, uh, ultimately our inventory is going to be the item valve right there. I keep saying block gate. I've got block gates on the mind, but it's an item valve and we're putting that out into the water. So there we go. We've got a flow going into that because we're also putting any seeds that we might have. These nether quartz seeds or nether quartz, certus quartz and fluic seeds. Those need to go into the water as well. And we're just checking kind of the same way, but uh, just checking for different things. And then the next, next order of business, this is the tricky part because we want to turn those 
accelerators on or off, we've got uh, a redstone emitter. So that's sitting down uh, along with the item valve. Uh, it's, it's in the same block, but we're targeting the same redstone emitter, but on one of them, we're turning on the pulse and one of them we're turning off the pulse so we will have a condition we've got if we've got the condition checking the uh, keep going back and forth there's so many things attached to this inventory cable so we check the item valve if it's got any of these items in any state of their growth then it's going to give a yes or no so if it's true then we turn on or we keep the redstone emitter on and if it's false and we turn the redstone emitter off and then the next order of business is we check that item valve again if we've got any of these items right here uh, so flux uh, or the pure crystals then we're going to send those to our output and that goes to our ME system all right the next one this is a little more complicated and this is our processors and we're using these inscribers I've got all the inscribers marked out with variables We've got one of the four eaches here um, going through all of the inscribers. And if we've got, and we check to make sure that's on our index. So if the current inscriber has any of these items, then what we're going to do is we pull out of that inscriber. So once again, our index variable right there and we send it to the output so that can go to the ME system to finish out the crafting recipe otherwise we're going to be either building the processors or the circuits let's take a look that looks pretty complicated doesn't it it's not too bad that uh, they're all they're pretty much the same so we check to make sure that um, our particular inscriber that we care about and that changes across all these conditions if it has the item that we need to convert into a circuit then uh, we don't do anything. So if it doesn't, then we grab, uh, we grab from our input chest and put it into the inscriber. So there we go. Now, and we just switch. So one of these is for the logic one, one's for the engineering, one's for the calculation, so on. So once you've seen one, you've seen them all. So once, once we've got those, we can go into our processor creation. First things first, we grab our redstone right here. And we put that into the correct spot on the top inscriber. So we got to put that right into the middle slot. And then our, our next condition is going to be the silicon. That goes into the bottom slot. And then the actual circuit uh, goes into the top slot. So, uh, so yeah, our, our, our input to know our output is going to go on the top right there. Uh, right here, we take a look. Goes in the down. And then right here check the target on the east side and that puts the redstone in on the right spot the reason you do that is because the AE2 inscribers care about which side these items come in so if you've got a press what you need to do is put your your gold or whatever it is goes into here gold silicon diamond pure certus quartz goes into this side and nothing goes in here and then the output comes from this side right here so um, they're they're kind of finicky about where the items come and go and all that so we just make sure that we target the right right uh, right spot so other than that uh, I think that's pretty much it maybe I'll show you the camouflage real quick got a few different groups here uh, one of these is going to be for the okay so that's the one in the crystal growth accelerator part um, down here is going to be the top portion of right in the inscribers this one is the bottom no that's the top this is the bottom one and then this is the rest of the ones that you can't see but are buried in the walls so we're making sure that we hide all of our stuff and uh, yeah th so there we go that's how I'm using Steve's factory manager for the applied energistics to auto crafting at least those raw materials the charged certus quartz the various circuits and processors and stuff and then the uh, seeds and and crystal growth that we have to do so we're all doing it this is kind of just one machine even though it's in separate spots it's one machine and we're using the inventory manager to drive all of it so if you have any questions i you know feel free to ask in the comment section down below or catch me on twitter and if you 
have been inspired for your own builds, do let me know. I'd love to see what you're working on. You can send those to me on Twitter as well. But uh, that's going to be it for now. Thank you so much for taking a little bit of time out of your day. I'm going to sleep here. And it means a lot. I know that time is precious, and I do thank you for sharing a little bit of it with me. But uh, that's going to be it for now, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.